to tell you a little bit about Birdsdale Academy, what we do, how we do it. Uh, hopefully keep this to about 30 minutes tonight. Um, we know what we do and we're pretty confident that uh, for the boys fortunate enough to go to our school, we, we really maximize our development academically, athletically, uh, and personally. Uh, you'll hear from some of our uh, alumni uh, who are, we've only been in existence for seven years, but some of our alumni are already making their mark. They have been drafted in the NHL. Some are playing Division One college hockey already. So um, it's, uh, it's a great school and uh, hopefully in, in the next half hour or so, uh, you'll come away with the exact same feeling about what a great school it is. Um, we start with the premise that every kid has a huge potential. Uh, two reasons, one is they're human beings and human beings are amazing. They have a terrific potential if, if it's guided and it's directed and nurtured. And we do all those things at Bridgestone. Um, I also know that he has a high potential because he's a hockey player. And uh, hockey players are, uh, they're unusual. Uh, hockey itself is an unusual game and I'm obviously biased toward it, but um, I think it teaches humility and it teaches a lot of great lessons. Um, it's hard to become even a marginally good hockey player. Uh, but we do, we do an outstanding job of having people come online, come to our school and whatever their starting point, we get them to the next level and the next level and the next level after that. Um, we've had many outstanding players who've come here over the years, outstanding young men. Uh, you'll hear from some of them in a bit. Um, and we're obviously very proud of them, rightly proud of them. But we're just as proud of all the boys who come through Bridgedale because uh, they all they all make their mark. Doesn't matter what their level is uh, when they get here, whether it's academic level or athletic level, they uh, uh, they buy in and they they develop, and it's exciting to see that. So I'm going to go through a uh, a uh, slideshow. I'm going to try to keep this pretty brief. I'll try to move quickly on it, and uh, so. I also wanted to say that the decision to where you send your child to school is a huge decision. It's an important decision. A lot of people don't even have a choice. They just, uh, they, for financial reasons, whatever, they're, they're locked into the public school at the district that they live in. And uh, but for those that do have a choice, um, it's a huge decision that can have a huge impact on your child's development. Um, I always encourage people to do their due diligence. You shouldn't, don't just base this on one presentation here. Uh, this is gonna be very cursory, it has to be. Uh, but the idea that you could uh, come in and meet us or hopefully uh, I'm gonna talk about next Thursday night, there's an opportunity to get in an interactive uh, Zoom meeting with our teachers. And there you have an opportunity to ask questions and uh, meet the people and see how passionate they are about what they do. Um, so I always encourage families to really, really vet the process. Um, I know that for families that do that, we, we pass uh, with flying colors. So Birdsdale Academy offers the best of both worlds. It's, it's a high-end classical education with fantastic teachers combined with high-end athletic training. Um, we're building leaders for the future. It's, it's a unique opportunity in the Chicago land area. It's a kind of a magnet for elite serious athletes. Uh, we help them to develop time management skills. We obviously develop their uh, hockey skills, but we also develop their athleticism and we also develop their leadership skills. Um, what we find is that there's kind of a mindset that develops here. All our student athletes, no matter what their competitive level is, they, they develop this, this mindset. And it's a mindset that kind of pervades the school. And it, in my opinion, it locks the boys in uh, on the path to success in their lives. So. Uh, this is one of our, uh, on the slide right now, this is one of our eighth graders. He played for Team Illinois, uh, uh, I think minor band of last year, 06. A terrific player, great talent. Um, and this is uh, every morning before school, um, I, I and Christina DePauli, who you see pictured here, Christina is our academic dean. Uh, we welcome the boys as they arrive for school every day. And uh, we hold the doors for them so they can lug their equipment through the doors. Obviously a goalie like this is gonna need two doors every time. 
Um, but it's a great opportunity for us to uh, set the tone at the beginning of the day. And uh, if the parents have any questions, uh, anything on their mind, it's a great opportunity for us to speak with them as well at that point in time. Uh, there's four factors, I'd say, that really, really make Birdsdale Academy unique. I've listed them here. It's the boys only learning environment. It's the classical academic curriculum. It's the small class sizes and it's the combination of academics and athletics that we, we, uh, we have. Um, we're going to get to each of these factors in, in more in depth in a little bit. Uh, first, I wanted to share with you a brief uh, video. It's about 10 minutes long and it's uh, little brief interviews or actually they were selfies of our, uh, some of our uh, graduates and some of our teachers. And, uh, and so here it is. I hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, it's Davis Burnside of the Tri-City Storm in the USHL, and I'm currently committed to play hockey at The Ohio State University. I went to Bridgedale for three years, and it was truly one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Bridgedale helped me improve my academics and taught me many life lessons. In addition, it helped me develop my hockey skills and my overall game. I would recommend Bridgedale to any young student athlete, as it's a great opportunity and experience to have. Thank you so much. Hey guys, it's Matthew de St. Fowl, the Chicago Steel. Uh, I went to Bridgedale in 2015 to 16, and I'm heading to the University of Wisconsin next year. Just want to say that Bridgedale is an amazing place. Uh, every day from the workout room to the on ice to the classroom uh, is truly a unique experience and something that a lot of kids dream of. So uh, if you guys get that opportunity, I, I'd say you jump on it. Hello, I'm Christina DePali, Academic Dean at Bridgedale Academy. I also teach seventh grade literature, grammar, vocabulary, and spelling. I'm one of the founders of Bridgedale, and I am extremely proud and passionate about shaping and guiding the lives of young men who walk through our doors. Like you, I am also a proud mother of two hockey-driven sons. I understand that boys at that age in middle school sometimes are not academically engaged, they are not confident in their abilities. They lose focus. They're not, they're afraid to raise their hands. They're afraid to get participate in class. And at Bridgedale, we all understand that. We have small class sizes. We offer individualized attention and we offer a dynamic instruction, both on the ice and in the classroom that help build a solid foundation for, for their future success. If you have any questions, if you'd like to meet with me, I'd love to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Josh Lopina. Uh, I played with the Lake and Stars the last two years in the USHL. I'm going to play college hockey next year at UMass Amherst, uh, where I got a scholarship. Uh, I only got a scholarship, not because of my play on the ice, but also because of my good grades in the classroom. Uh, I went to Bridgeville Academy my seventh and eighth grade year in middle school. Um, nothing but good things to say about Bridgedale. Uh, the coaches, the, the teachers, and everyone there is, is there for you and, and they're there to excel you as a person on and off the ice. Um, one thing that really sticks out to me about uh, my time at Bridgedale was um, one of their core core values and identi uh, identity. Um, that's teaching everyone there the, how to be a good leader and, and leadership on and off the ice and everything you do. So um, everyone stay safe and uh, thanks. Hi, my name is Jack Silich. I went to British for one year. I played at the Boston Junior Bruins at CTC last year. And this upcoming year, I'll be playing the Youngstown Dragons in the USHL. And I'm also committed to Columbia University. My experience at British was awesome. I learned a lot not only as a player, but as a human, and the growth of my teachers and the staff at British. Hello, my name is Therese Dion. I am the primary math teacher for fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. And I also teach eighth grade geometry and eighth grade science. In math, we use traditional textbooks um, with you know traditional ways of teaching, but we also put an extra emphasis on a consistent reviewing of basic skills so that we can achieve mastery through consistency. The reason I love Bridgedale and what makes it such a unique experience is the community that we're able to achieve. It, Bridgedale is like coming home. My coworkers are my family. My students end up feeling like family by the end of the year. And the relationships that everyone has between the parents and the teachers and the students, the administration, the ice rink, it really is a lovely environment that can't be replicated anywhere else. I've been here since 2013 when we opened our doors. So that makes it for seven years. And I haven't left since. 
and I don't want to go. There's nowhere else I could get this experience and love my job. I love my job. This is why I love Bridgedale and it makes it such a unique, fun, beautiful place for your son to grow up in. Hi, my name is Sean Barons. I went to Bridgedale for two years and I play for the U.S. National Team Development Program now. Bridgedale helped me become not only a better hockey player and improve my skills on the ice, but a better student off the ice too. When I was at Bridgedale, I learned a lot of valuable lessons that helped me in life and succeed where I am now. Hey everyone, I'm Andrew Maynard, and I went to Bridgedale Academy from 2013 to 2016. I played junior hockey last year for the New Jersey 87s, and this upcoming year I'll be playing for Tufts University. Uh, Bridgedale Academy was absolutely instrumental in my success, both as an athlete and as a student, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity I was given to go there. Hi, I'm Christy Flory. I've been teaching at Bridgedale for the last five years. Currently, I am teaching seventh and eighth grade algebra. On the first day of class, I'll always say to my students, I want you to be great at this subject. By the end of the school year, I want you to feel like you're great at algebra, not just good at it, but great. The way I foster greatness in my students is teaching them the habits that they need in order to find that success. Some of these habits include uh, taking notes, organizing a binder, quality homework, and most importantly, I test my students cumulatively. So every time they have a test or a quiz in algebra, anything we've learned from the entire school year can be on that test or quiz. And in this way, they're not just learning information and dumping it, but they're actually mastering concepts. The best thing about working at Bridgedale is the ability that we have to establish relationships with our students. We have more time in the class to work with them one-on-one. -on -one. Every student has an impact in the classroom. There's no one that can hide. Everyone participates every day. Everybody asks questions. Everybody goes to the board. Everybody is free to take risks to learn. And it's a, such a great part about Bridgedale. Also, relationships lead to more success and that success also builds character in our students. Hi, this is Warren Chingosi. I went to Bridgedale from 6th to 8th grade and it was a blast. Um, being able to play hockey at, your, at where you go to school is definitely something that a lot of kids aren't able to do. So um, I've been playing in Waterloo of the USHL for the past two years and I plan to go back for another season. Bridgedale Academy is a wonderful place to be. I've been teaching here for seven years since the beginning and the staff is knowledgeable, dedicated, so dedicated, like I've never seen it. Compassionate, so compassionate. We care about each of the students. Our leadership is creative and understanding and nurturing and our students, all our students, they are Fabulous. The curriculum here is quite challenging and robust, yet the students know what's expected of them and they get it done. They get it done here. They work hard and they learn hard. They learn an awful lot here. I'm Mary Pat Murray. I teach ELA to the fifth and sixth grade students, English language arts, which is comprised of five components spelling and vocabulary, grammar literature and composition. Our curriculum is full of fundamentals. It is steeped in fundamentals. The full meaning. The students leave here much, much better writers, readers, and speakers. Small class sizes, the dedicated staff, the compassion, the care that's taken for each student. It, it, it's the perfect academic environment. Hi, my name is Michael Prokos. I'm the history teacher at Bridgedale Academy. I've been here for about two years. I've been here since November 2018. So uh, I teach fifth grade through eighth grade, the history program here. And uh, we go over a bunch of different types of curriculum and subjects. In fifth grade, we go over sort of the 1860s American history in that aspect. We talk about Civil War, Reconstruction, slavery, North versus South differences. And then for sixth grade, we pick up right where we left off. We get into the Gilded Age. We talk about robber barons like Andrew Carnegie, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, J.P. Morgan, people like that. We also delve a little bit into the Spanish-American War, World War I, that grade. 
In seventh grade, we talk about the ancient cultures, ancient civilizations like Egypt, China, India, Greece, Rome, uh, things like that. For eighth grade, we talk about the 13 colonies. We talk about the Revolutionary War. We get into the Constitution, the history of it, um, the three branches of government and the balance of powers. And then we take the Constitution test. After that, we get into the uh, history of Illinois. We talk about the Constitution for Illinois as well. Uh, overall, what I like the most about Bridgedale Academy is probably the small classroom sizes and the environment that we uh, foster here. It's when it's smaller, I feel like it's more personalized, which it fosters a greater learning experience. People don't fall through the cracks here. They receive the necessary attention that they deserve. And um, overall, the education here is very comprehensive and it does a great job of preparing the students for, for high school and beyond. You can see at the bottom of the page there that we're going to have a, a more interactive Zoom meeting next Thursday. It's by invite only. And uh, I'll be telling you more about that. There's a link that you can sign up for it with, or you could just email or call me. Uh, my email is on our website. I'll give it to you anyway in a little bit. And uh, I'll give you my phone number as well, which I believe is also on my website. Of the four unique factors, the first unique factor is it's a boys only learning environment. We have a big problem with today's education system and we're kind of burying our head in the sands about it, but it comes down to boys are not doing well academically as a group. It's bad enough that our country is floundering a little bit and uh, we used to be tops in the world internationally and now we're 13 and we're only at 13 because they the last poll that I read or the last study that I read really weighted one of the factors very, very heavily in favor of the United States. And if it weren't for that, they wouldn't even have been in the top 25 internationally, which is just, it's a disgrace is what it is. But, but girls are excelling in school in the same environment and uh, while boys are floundering. Um, there's a real interesting author by the name of Christine Hoff Summers. She's written a book called The War Against Boys and she's done a lot uh, she's a PhD and she studied it a lot and it's really, really interesting. One of her statements is, being a normal boy in school today can be a serious liability. Um, but at Bridgedale, boys thrive, so Bridgedale's were different. There is bias against boys in school and it's a huge problem. Um, one of the ways you can get away from that is to have all the boys uh, compete with each other, basically. Um, it's studies show that the top academic performers are girls in an all girls school academically second academically performing are boys in an all boys school third are girls in a co-ed school dead last are boys in a co-ed school so part of it is that boys need a lot more guidance um, more than more than 60 percent of the college grad graduates today are girls even though uh, boys still outnumber girls at that age um, and unfortunately, the, the gap is widening. Um, a lot of times in school, the teachers just regard the boys as, as defective girls, and that's a terrible shame. Uh, but the fact these uh, boys do need more guidance, they're less mature physiologically, mentally, and emotionally than girls. They lag behind girls from a cognitive, cognitive skills perspective. Uh, boys in, in academic settings tend to be intimidated by the smarter, more mature girls. Um, boys generally speaking, can't sit still. Um, they need to be active. Um, boys need positive role models, and those are relatively hard to find in, in most of the elementary school system. Um, schools tend to emphasize subjects that girls like, but boys dislike. And so many girls end up loving school while boys hate it. Um, there is a solution, and I would say that one of the solutions is right here at Bridgedale Academy. Uh, Bridgedale Academy boys become readers. Uh, they read books they like about things that interest them. There's a lot of coming of age uh, stories and it's pretty much all just classic literature that has stood the test of time. Um, they boys need to have their imaginations inspired and these books do that as do other things that we challenge the boys with at, uh, at Bridgedale. Um, boys are rambunctious as well by nature and so they, ne they need discipline but the irony of it is they, they, they kind of crave discipline. 
and they also need the physical release uh, that uh, I don't know if schools even have recess anymore, but they certainly should. And, and uh, obviously at Birsdale, uh, we have a 70 minute minimum ice session every uh, every day, Monday through Thursday, as well as a 40 minute uh, off ice session, Monday through Thursday. So the actual solution ultimately is just let boys be boys. Um, when boys are in an old boys school, they're on equal footing academically against other boys, and so they're willing to compete academically. Um, again, they read the books that inspire them, and the, the what comes to, into play here is that they come to love learning, and we've seen this consistently. Um, even with boys whose parents ultimately told us they have no interest in school, and yet they end up very, very surprised at how, uh, how into school boys get because they end up loving learning. Our second unique factor is the curriculum that we use. It's a classical academic curriculum, um, which the academic curriculum, or it's based on the academic curriculum of Hillsdale Academy, which is on the campus of Hillsdale College in Michigan. And it's a fantastic curriculum that's being used all over the country uh, by private schools that uh, similar to ours, I suppose, but just uh, I've never met one yet that has done it for athletes. Um, and it actually works out pretty amazing. Um, the classical curriculum has its roots back in ancient Greece with Aristotle. It's fundamentally about the mastery of, of English language. Um, it's based on what is called the trivium, which is a gra grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Grammar is just this generalized body of knowledge. Uh, logic is how do these things fit together, and rhetoric is being able to speak uh, and convince people in argument, uh, in, in logical argument. It involves critical thinking, and then, as I said, uh, the boys at Birdsdale, uh, they learn how to uh, give recitations. All the seventh graders and eighth graders uh, have to learn how to public speak. Uh, it can be very uh, daunting as they try to get to it initially, but they all do. Um, discipline is part and parcel of, re of, of receiving a, a, a good education. It, uh, it demands and commands respect. Um, so we have a dress code. Uh, the idea there is if you dress the part, it, the, the, in fact, studies prove that uh, where you have a dress code and you come in and you're dressing, obviously you're dressing out of respect for the, the thing you're doing that day. The, the job you have that day as a student, you get to school, uh, it's not just being on the playground, it's you're here to learn. Um, there are no phones in class and discipline is enforced uh, appropriately when needed. Um, boys are boys and so they will step over that line. Uh, but we do allow them to be boys. And like I said, it's kind of a funny thing because ultimately I think they crave uh, the guidance, they cr crave the, the discipline. We have our own on-site uh, classrooms at Brazil. Uh, we're located physically inside the Seven Birds Ice Arena where we built out our classrooms when we started up the school. Obviously right now in lieu of the uh, COVID-19 uh, epidemic, uh, we're on, doing our on online distance learning. Um, from what I gather, from what everybody says to me, our teachers are just knocking it out of the park. Uh, it was a seamless transition, and we get all kinds of praise for our parent, from our parents. Um, I would encourage you to go on our website and look under our testimonials to read some of the nice things they say about how well we've handled this. But be that as it may, it's just not the same as what our teachers can do uh, in class. And I think you, you kind of saw the passion in our teachers and those that were able to speak with you in that that video that I showed, um, but we're making the best of it. You had an opportunity to see our teachers. I, I say that our the school is only as good as its teachers and no one has a staff like ours. So I'm gonna go very quickly and just, uh, th these are very detailed, uh, the next few slides. Um, if you wanna maybe take a, 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 a screenshot of it, that's fine, I'll hold it there for a few seconds, but. Um, much better, I would have an opportunity uh, to come next Thursday and meet these people in a, in a live interactive meeting. Um, obviously, Christina DePauli is our academic dean. Uh, she's pretty much the head of school in every way. I have the title of headmaster, but uh, I, I lean on Christina for all, all everything that, that goes on at Brazil Academy, and she's just fantastic. Uh, she's the one that uh, oversaw the transition to the online, and she just did a fantastic job. Um, you, met, you heard from Teresa Young. She's also been with us from uh, day one. Teresa was actually, she didn't say this in her video, but she was a college athlete herself. And she still uh, teaches high school kids uh, volleyball. She's a, 
uh, she understands the athletic development process and, and just is so good at, as a teacher for us. It's fantastic. Um, you did not hear from Janine Cool. Janine teaches uh, science to the fifth, sixth, and seventh graders, and she teaches um, eighth grade English. She's taught eighth grade English with, with, for us for, from day one, and she is just a fantastic teacher. Uh, she teaches these uh, books. She gets the kids to, to give their presentations. Uh, their public speaking just develops because of her. And uh, she's just terrific. So um, all of the eighth graders, they basically, they, if any teacher they're going to miss uh, when they graduate from Bridgedale Academy, it's Janine Cool. Um, you heard from Mary Pat Murray. She's our fifth and our sixth grade English teacher. She's also been with us from day one. And she's, I, 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 uh, I say she's our toughest teacher. She, she's, if any of our fifth and sixth graders get straight A's, and some do, they are outstanding students who are working very, very hard because she's like a great coach. She challenges these kids day in and day out. If she knows they're great students and her expectations rise to the level that she should expect from them, uh, and she does. So uh, you heard from Michael Prokos. Michael, like you said, he's been with us for about, about two years. Uh, he's also been terrific. Um, we're happy uh, uh, to have a, a male role model in the classroom. Uh, we obviously have those on the ice, uh, but Mike does a terrific job there, and and he uh, he interacts with the kids fantastically. You couldn't tell from his little video, but uh, uh, he actually shaved his beard off because uh, he had made a bet with the kids. He said, "If you will all pass the Constitution tests on the first go round, I'll shave my beard off," and they all hunkered down and, and did it. So uh, Mike's been terrific for us. And then you also heard from Christy. Christy is, uh, she teaches a couple of our courses. She's actually our only uh, part-time teacher, um, but she's invaluable to us. Uh, she allows us to, uh, we can address every level of math skill that any child that goes to our school has, whether he's off the charts fantastic or whether he's very, really, really struggling. Um, we can handle that sometimes, and we've had it this year where there's just one boy in a class because he's advanced beyond the other kids. Uh, more often it's two or three boys, um, but in, we've never had a class, I don't think, where every boy in the class was on the same math level. So uh, Christy allows us the luxury of, uh, of, of handling math uh, as well as any school could possibly handle. Um, people are always asking us, well, where do, you, where do you graduates, where do they go on to high school? And this is a partial list, and it's just listing uh, the uh, private schools, but there's some real prominent private schools, and the kids just do so well. Um, I don't need, I know we, we have another boy, one of our uh, eighth graders received a scholarship actually to go to uh, Marmion and we have another boy there. So uh, Marmion is another outstanding academy that's not even on this list. And then the boys, uh, they go to their own local public schools and they just, uh, they just tear it up. They're, they're, they're just terrific. Uh, we prepare them so well academically that when they get to high school with the typical high school curriculum, especially in the public schools, the way those are handled, uh, unless they're in the really high end classes, they, they really, really do well. Our third unique factor is our small classroom sizes. Uh, there's so much more, you heard of the teachers talk about it, but there's more one-on-one -on -one personalized attention. There's a, a nowhere to hide. Uh, all this, a real community develops because uh, there's, uh, the students get to know each other so well. Um, there's, in the smaller classrooms, there's less disruption. There's less need there for, for discipline. Um, it's a more caring environment. And ultimately, it's, uh, studies prove that it's even more it's more healthy. Um, the National Council, Council of Teachers uh, can underwent a study and it says, well, the ac academic uh, gains of small classroom sizes are prominent. They're long lasting, they impact future earnings. Uh, they really impact the quality of the language and writing skills and they enhance the student engagement. Um, students develop a greater ability to adapt to inter intellectual and academic challenges. And ultimately, uh, it enhances their long-term success. They're more likely, uh, to, uh, statistically, more likely to attend college, uh, statistically a greater, greater earning potential, and, and I suppose subjectively, but uh, improved citizenship. One of the things about the uh, classical curriculum is that it is designed to uh, allow people to, or to, to develop people so they can become capable of participating in self-government, and that's what our country is all about. Um, another unique part of our uh, our curriculum, I suppose to call it, is every school day, Monday through Thursday, after school from 3.30 to 5, we have a supervised study hall. It's a fantastic opportunity for boys to get their 
homework done and ultimately a lot of the boys and we talk about their time management skills a lot of the boys figure it out you know what i'm going to get my homework done i'm going to sit down I'm not going to let anybody bother me it might take them a half hour it might take them 45 minutes then they're done and they have no homework to bring home uh, they go to their practice that night uh, and they don't have to worry about homework when they get home they can go to bed uh, and and tutoring is available in these in these study hall sessions as well um, our fourth unique factor is we combine our academics and our athletics. Um, there are other schools that have athletics, but uh, none combine the academics that we offer. Um, our athletics by the numbers, I break it down, seven themes, three trimesters, one tremendous year. The seven themes, you have the skating fundamentals, puck handling, passing and pass receiving, shooting skills, checking skills, tactical play and positioning, and game concepts. Um, skating fundamentals, inside outside edges. Uh, I used to run a uh, program, uh, I, I ran a coach for many, many years, and I ran uh, clinics and camps for many, many years. And one of my more successful camps over the years was a program I called Elements of Agility. And the kids obviously I get steeped in that. And that's a great, pro uh, it's a great program because it translates so well into everything else. We work on transition and overspeed and then explosive uh, power so they can develop separation speed. Puck handling fundamentals. Basic deeks. Uh, it's, I'm always surprised that uh, when I encounter very good hockey players that don't have a good sense of, of the, the basic deke. You know, they might be able to do the forehand deke, but they cannot do the backhand deke. And they're fundamentally very, very basic moves, but they, like everything else, they require practice. We work on uh, controlling the puck with the skates, puck protection, uh, puck, puck placement, passing and pass receiving. Uh, it's arguable today that passing is the most important skill in the game of hockey. Uh, as long as you have a few of the other things. But if, if you can and are a great passer, you look at Patrick Kane as best passer. I don't know if I've ever seen a better passer. The guy's amazing. But um, So we work on all the fundamentals of, of passing, forehand or backhand, one-touch passing, uh, sauce. When they, when they have mastered the basic, then we'll let them do some sauce. Concept of area passes. And then very much learning how to receive passes, uh, force the passes into their feet. Uh, force the passes uh, where they come up at hand level or chest level and they have to take a hand off the stick, grab the puck and put it down to their stick. Uh, it's a skill not taught enough. Shooting skills, uh, obviously the basics of accuracy, release and velocity, all the different shots. We try to teach them how to shoot in stride. Um, there's changing the release point concepts and then there's just goal scoring uh, concepts, goal scoring ideas. Um, checking skills, I also used to run a lot of checking uh, clinics. Uh, angling and steering, uh, body contact confidence, uh, how to receive checks, um, and how to counter hit. But sometimes, no matter how elusive you are, you get lined up. And if you know you're lined up, then you should hit back for balance. Uh, and then just boards confidence, so you're, you understand how to take hits along the boards. Um, tactical play and positioning is primarily, uh, we, we do basic tactics, uh, two-on-ones, two-on-twos, three-on-twos. They learn how to recognize them and then attack them and then to defend them. Um, and then there's just the one, two, three attack principle, which is basically triangle offense, I suppose, uh, but there's different ways to execute it. Um, and then you have game concepts, you have off sense of offensive support concepts, defensive support concepts. A uh, big one I have worked on a lot in my clinics and a lot on the ice with the boys is on ice timing. There's a spot on the ice where you're gonna receive that pass. It's the optimal spot to receive it and you wanna arrive there on time uh, with proper angle and at speed. And then this is, combines and game concepts with situa situation recognition, reading the numbers, understanding when there's been a breakdown. Uh, we work on a lot of commonly recurring situations, and then we teach a lot through small area games so that they can start to, uh, to, to learn some of these concepts because built into the game, and you cannot have success in the game without mastering some of these concepts. Um, talk about three trimesters during the course of the year, and trimester one, uh, goes up until around Thanksgiving, which is just really a lot of fundamentals, a lot of skating. Uh, we work on the whole body rhythm thing and posture, a lot of things that are important like that and all the fundamental skills. Trimester two, we start working in how do you defend, how do you understand how to defend, uh, read and react, honest timing, uh, how to create time and space and how to look through pressure uh, offensively and defensively. And then trimester three, it's just about putting it together, trying to execute at speed, uh, a lot of more game simulation with small area games. Uh, game like tactical situations, a lot more battle drills, and trying to play at a higher speed uh, to get them ready for their uh, playoffs. Uh, we also have goaltending instruction. Uh, we have uh, 
three great goaltenders that worked with us this year. Uh, Ross McKay, whose son Dryden McKay is all American goaltender at uh, Mankato or now it's Minnesota State. Um, we also have uh, Oliver Fries, who, or, who's pictured here. Uh, he's with uh, GDI. And then we also have Jack Hickey. Uh, all three are just terrific. We uh, work with the boys so well. Uh, here's a little bit about myself. I've uh, been coaching longer than I like to admit. Uh, more than 40 years. I know I've coached more than a thousand games. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever had a team that had a losing record. If, if I did, it was a team that improved. Uh, and it improved because I always had a high expectation. I, I ultimately had a very high regard for the boys and what they could accomplish. And I tried to picture in my mind's eye, how good can this boy be? And then try to make it reasonable. But then my expectations, I'll call them, they became demands. If I, it's not just an expectation. I demand that you live up to this. And the irony of it is that they did. Uh, there's my uh, email at the bottom. It's mmcpartland at birchdaleacademy.com. Uh, my phone number is uh, area code 708-712-5079. And uh, I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions about this program or if you're interested in joining us next Thursday night for the more interactive uh, uh, Zoom meeting we're going to have same time 7 p.m. Uh, that is by invite only, so I, I'm sending out the uh, meeting uh, IDs and the passwords uh, on individual basis for that. Um, we all we uh, people ask us, okay, well, where did your grads play last year? And here's just a listing of it. This is not everybody. Um, a lot of the younger boys were uh, playing AAA. Uh, many of the kids just aspire to play AAA, and they're they're moving in that direction is the way I would say it. But we're very proud of uh, Jake Pavanka and Spencer Stastny, who have just finished their sophomore years at Notre Dame. Both of those boys played at the National Team Development Program. Brady Smith just had his first year at Colorado College. You heard from Eddie de fall He didn't mention he was the leading scorer in the USHL this year. And he's, he's a terrific player. He's going to light it up. Odie Wilds already signed with the New York Islanders. Tyler Carpenter will be at Notre Dame next year. So this is just a, a list of where the boys are uh, played this year. And then here's just a list of the D1 scholarships. And, uh, and then again, there's other boys. You heard from uh, Drew uh, Maynard, who's going to play at Tufts University, which is a top level Division three program. So uh, very high level hockey. Um, very proud of these boys, obviously, but we're proud of all the kids. Uh, every single kid that comes through and buys into what we do, and that's 99% of the kids, um, come out uh, on the other end just I want to say transformed the uh, academically, intellectually, confidence-wise, self-esteem-wise. Um, it's really something to watch. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, here's another uh, screen. I'll leave it on for a few seconds here. You can join us next Thursday, May 21st, 7 p.m., interactive, on, interactive online meet and greet with our, teacher, our teachers and staff. And the sign-in is right there. It's uh, learn.birchdaleacademy.com forward slash online dash meet dash and dash greet. Um, Sure hope you can make it. And again, if you have any questions in the meantime, um, please feel free to, uh, to reach out to me either by email or phone. Um, and I look forward to chatting with you. Hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I have. So uh, thanks very much for uh, participating. And again, if you have any questions, give me a call. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody.